You're watching Inside Automotive with Jim Fitzpatrick. Good morning, everyone. Jim Fitzpatrick with CBT News. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Today, we've got special guests in the studio with us. We've got Colin Kubik and also Alex Maison, both students at Northwood University. Uh, this is a school, folks, that you know has been supporting the retail automotive industry. In fact, the entire automotive industry by providing great uh, a pool of talent to both OEMs as well as dealers nationwide. So we're so happy to have these two students with us today. We're gonna to talk a little bit about the auto industry and I wanna get your perspective on it, if, if that's cool. So uh, there's a lot going on as you know out there and I'll start with you, Alex. Um, talk to us from your perspective, do consumers want EVs, we're talking so much about EVs sure. here at CBT News. Everybody talks about it. Um, you're a young uh, person coming in right now. I don't know if you've purchased your own car yet or sure. not, but uh, A, would you buy an EV? And, and where do you think we stand right now with regard um, to? I think we're in a very interesting place. I think we're very, very split mm -hmm. on EVs. Uh, there's people I talk to who say, I'll never, ever, ever, ever buy one. And okay. there's people who are like, give me one now. Yeah. Um, me personally, I don't think I would ever buy one just because of our charging infrastructure. Okay. Um, some of our, um, like electricity, some counties where you live in, if the DMV reports that you bought an EV, mm -hmm. your electricity bill goes up. There's, <laughs> wow. no, there's okay. no point in yeah. saving on gas. And yeah. then also some of the, the environmental impacts of the EVs uh, that people don't really look into. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, such as mining these materials. Sure. What what trucks are mining the materials? Yeah. Diesel power trucks. Yeah. And then sure. you got to put the materials on the boat, then right. and bring them to the factory. It's just right. From birth to death of the vehicle, I don't yeah. think that it's the most efficient right now. I sure. think at one point we could get to a point where that will be the solution. Mm -hmm. But I think right now hybrid technology is the way to go. Really? Yeah. 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 And and what about you, Colin? So. I think there is a lot of pressure in the industry to make a decision, to move towards um, new solutions like you were talking about. And personally, I, I love a combustion engine. Okay. I, I think you can't go wrong. And I will personally be driving a combustion engine um, until I see a solution that is more reasonable instead of having um, you know, an electric vehicle that um, has limited charging abilities. Mm -hmm. And then also um, in that regard as well, is more sustainable for the environment. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see what solutions lie in the future. I don't know if EV is for me. Yeah, um, that's but. interesting because when you think, when you talk to the people that are promoting EVs, they will tell you, well, this is what the young people want as well, to save the environment. They're more environmentally focused and, uh, and, and, and we're gonna see more young people that are starting to buy their, you know, their, their vehicles, maybe their first car, what have you, and, and they're gonna want EVs. But in both cases, you say, not so fast. We're, yeah. we're and, I, and I can only speak for myself and sure. some of the friends that I uh, that I know. And uh, yeah. some of them were like, "Yeah, I'll buy an EV because it's fast." Sure. Uh, not really uh, thinking about the environmental issue, right. which is which right. is funny because that's the main focus of pushing this technology. But sure. a lot of the times, it's not the main focus. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about um, the economy and sure. its impact on the automotive industry. Uh, it looks as though now that we're beyond COVID and those great you know, sales days that we had and those month after month of record sales, mm -hmm. it's now coming back to some sort of a normalization in the industry. We're seeing lower gross profits there by lower net profits to dealerships and such. What's, what's your take on that? Uh, sure, I think there's a, definitely an adjustment period. A yeah. lot of people got into the automotive business and sort of got blinded mm -hmm. uh, by those COVID times you mentioned uh, with the elevated gross profits. Yeah. and. Um, I mean, personal experience, we've seen uh, some salesmen um, leave because they're not making the money they used to. Yeah. Um, but what people got to realize is we're just going back to normal times. Right. Uh, now, as far as inventory goes, some manufacturers have better situations than others. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it, it's really crazy how that pandemic affected our industry. Oh, and, no question. Um, yeah. It really threw things in, the, in a wrench in the things because it's it like you really don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, you never know what's going to happen in six months to a year, even tomorrow. Sure. Um, so I guess that's a general saying for life, but uh, we that's sort right. of got uh, that point proven to us in the automotive that's industry. Right. Yeah. That's right. Colin, the average price of a new car is uh, just under $50,000. And affordability is something we talk about here at CBT, as well as uh, all of the media that covers the auto industry. Mm. Um, talk to me about that. Almost $50,000 for, for a new car. You're a young guy coming into your, to, into your own now and uh, starting to think about those types of things. Uh, what's, what's your take on that? I look at it like I'm, I'm trying to 
establish myself and create structure in my okay. life. And it's really hard to do so when you have all these, um, you know, ne necessary purchases that you need to make, yeah. especially like transportation, to be That's able right. to get to around and get around to That's where right. you're going. And when that is at a premium mm -hmm. at this point in comparison to what it's been over the past few years, yeah. it creates a sense of fear within myself and, you know, around the people that I'm with. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not to say that it can't be done, yeah. of course. Um, but I know that in this economic situation that we're in, most middle middle class families are working two jobs just to stay yeah. afloat and, right. and keep, you know, food on the table, but also, you know, live at the standard of living that we've set the bar yeah. for us right now. That's right. So seeing that, you know, the prices are, you know, 50,000 for a new car on average, mm -hmm. um, that's a huge expense for any, yeah, any really family is. out there. Yeah. But at the same time, knowing that there are dealers out there that allow the, that relationship to be established with these families mm -hmm. and trust is established, knowing that there are people out there that kind of see the inner workings and understand and feel that economic impact, mm -hmm. allow people to, you know, make rational decisions when they walk into a dealership and, and able to kind of, you know, get them to understand that um, $50,000 now is, you know, less in the long run yeah. when yeah. it comes to getting to where you need to be. That's right. That's right. Alex, we see um, a lot of people that, um, uh, you know, that, that get into the auto industry. Um, it seems as though uh, in a lot of cases, they'll say, hey, very long hours in the car business, yeah. the retail side of the business, I should say. The pay can fluctuate if you're in sales or even if you're maybe writing service or what have you. Um, what's your take on that? Do you think you'll find yourself running a dealership or, sure. or getting into sales or what's yeah. the next step um, and how do you feel about that? That's the goal one day. Uh, yeah. My goal is to uh, own and operate my uh, own, I guess, luxury group. Uh, so okay. brands like uh, Bentley, Aston Martin, wow. Rolls Royce, stuff like that. That's great. Um, but I, I've started in the retail industry, uh, I think. A few years back, okay. I think I would like to say 15, 16 years old. Okay, I was working in a new vehicle prep. Okay, uh, so basically it was a little warehouse, and I was taking sure. off the plastics. Yep, and every job's important, but sure. in my mind, I was like, oh my god, yeah. this is my start. <laughs> um, and I worked my way up, and I've done sales, and uh, sure. I, I do find myself in the retail. Uh, uh, I guess uh, the environment and environment. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Um, but yeah, long hours. Uh, I mean, there's days where you're eight to eight. Yeah. And you go home and all you want to do is go to bed. That's right. And then you wake up in the morning and you work. But uh, uh, it, it does take a different, uh, I guess, different type of breed of person to work in the yeah. retail industry. We hear a lot about people that are leaving college that uh, they want more of a work-life balance. Sure. They don't want to work so many hours. And and uh, it means more to the people today that, that are coming out of colleges and universities getting into their first job that they say, Look, I got to have a personal life, and I, I you know, I don't want to work over thirty-five or forty hours a week, sure. and uh, that's in a lot of cases just not the car business. Yeah, it? no, it's really not, yeah. and uh, that's why I said it takes a special kind of person to work, and it, it takes work ethic, and uh, that's something that uh, I pride myself in, because yeah. I have no problem working those long hours and then sure. going home and going to bed. Now, granted, work-life balance is important. Right. Take your time, take your vacations, but right. I, there's really nothing I love more than walking into a dealership at seven, eight in the morning and yeah. get my day started, That's having great. a customer interaction. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's a great time for me, at least. Then you are perfectly suited for the auto industry. That, that's for sure. How about you, Colin? Do I see myself running a dealership or jumping into the auto industry? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't see myself running a dealership per se, but I do see myself becoming ambitious and speaking about the big picture, okay. about the industry itself. Okay. Um, to be seated at a spot where I'm able to um, push the development of the growth that we have going on here. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of really exciting things that have come out of the auto industry since COVID. Yeah, exciting sure. things. Yeah. Um, talking about demos that have shortened times uh, within the dealerships. Yeah. Um, fast pacing the process of getting you know cars into people's driveways. Yeah. There's we're moving online in a lot of places. There's some really exciting things, especially for the consumer, knowing that they're so well taken care of yeah. as they're heading out to make a, a really big purchase for themselves. So being ambitious about displaying that message, creating those relationships, mm -hmm. because in in the industry there's no shortage of relationship generation yeah. and cultivation. Yeah. So. Being able to spearhead efforts in that degree, sure. that's that's where my heart sets. So I would love to be able to be on the forefront. Of that. That's fantastic. Uh, we, we saw so many new technologies kind of pop up uh, during COVID to help dealers sell and deliver more cars. 
Alex, would you would you buy a car completely online? Uh, could uh, you see yourself doing that, sitting in front of your laptop and saying, I'm not going to leave my home. I know the car that I want. I'm going to do the entire transaction here sure. and I'll have the vehicle delivered to me, much the way we see Carvana handling their business. Yeah, uh, me personally, I would never do that. Okay. Uh, I like to feel the car. I like to like, <laughs> like old kick school. the tires, yeah, kick the tires, right. feel the car, feel how it is sure. on the road. And uh, even to be honest, see it in person. Yeah. Uh, I think that person to person interaction is yeah. so important. And uh, uh, even the consumer to dealer uh, relationship is important. Yeah. Knowing that you have somewhere where you can go take your car in for service yeah. and be like, oh my God, there's my salesman. That's right. Hi, like I have a friend here. It's right. I have an I, an I, I, oh, I have an ally right. at the store that I bought my car from, and it's not just a machine showing up in my driveway, right. potentially going out and being like, eh. you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I I, I really uh, I don't think I would ever go that direction. Yeah. I know a lot of people who would. Yeah. Um, but for me, I like having an uh, ally in my sure, direction. sure. And I don't think you're alone. I think the vast majority of consumers you know, want to do some of the process online, you know, sure. maybe submit a credit application yeah. or lock down a particular car, but they really need to get to the dealership. Exactly. And I think that, close that deal. step, I, I like that step. Yeah. I think that step's important um, to moving sort of like hybrid. Yeah. Uh, so do half the process at home, come in, sure. sign the final papers, get your car. Um, but I think there could be a way where we could work it out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. We saw so many different of those different, you know, uh, uh, technologies emerging and to help dealers with digital retailing, sure. you know, yeah. and uh, Colin, what about you? Could you see yourself buying a car completely online one day? That's a great question. And I don't believe so. No, no, there's no universe where I, I think I can do that whole process online. Yeah. I think there's a story to be told when you walk into yeah. a dealership, you walk out of there having met people that take care of you every step of the way. Sure. And then you know, you get to say, hey, I went through this whole process and then I get to have this car in my driveway after all the effort and all the time that it's taken instead of like a one click buy. Right. There's no, you know, success, no, re no, no story in that. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I'm all part of the story. Yeah. And if I could touch on that real yeah. quick, it just made me thought it's uh, something I've heard is some of the biggest moments in your life, buying a house and buying a car. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, so why not make that moment special? That's right. Um, and not just painful on your computer, seeing a little credit app, is doing it again, and then having to <laughs> wait four days, and right. your car comes in, and you're like, that wasn't a big yeah. event in my yeah. life, but uh, yeah. There's a, that's a perfect segue to my next question. We're seeing some dealer groups that are moving to a one price structure sure. um, that says, look, the price is marked on the window. We don't negotiate. That's the price of the car. If you want to negotiate, we wouldn't be the dealer for you. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? Would you buy a car that way? And are you okay with that? Do you see it as the future or do you think it's... That's a great question. I don't see it as the future. Am I okay with it? That that's requires more thought. Uh, I actually really haven't even thought about that. Yeah. And, um, I wish I could give you an yeah. answer. You know, CarMax, that's the way they sell yeah. all of their yeah. cars, is and that it's clearly marked, that's, it. that's, that's the that's price, no we don't negotiate. And to, the, to my point before, it's like, I, I don't think I would be okay with that, yeah. just because I do want that experience. You do? I do yeah. want something that, like, yeah. hey, like, X amount, and you're gonna be like, eh, and then it's like, it's fun, it's <laughs> you, negotiation. You like that, yeah. you're okay yeah. with that? Yeah. Okay, so. yeah, they say that it appeals to certain demographics of individuals that sure. say, I don't mind buying a car, I wanna buy a car, but I really do not like yeah. the sales process where you're back and forth and you're wondering if you're yeah. a good enough negotiator and what have you, but. Yeah, and uh, for me, I think it's because uh, since I work in the industry, I think I enjoy the other side of the game too. Yeah. So where I, when I go in and I purchase my vehicle, I could be on the other side of the desk, right, and be like, ah, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're made out. You're made for the car business. Yeah. What about you, Colin? Well, Would you? I see the appeal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I really do because a lot of people see the car buying process as a yeah. stressful operation. Right. There's a lot of time and there's a lot of thought that goes into it and a lot of decision. Usually, family's got to go back and forth. Yeah. Talk of course. About that kind of thing. Um, but also, like I, we were talking about earlier about the story, there's there's no story when somebody doesn't help you out, yeah. right? It makes you feel good about the decision you're making sure. and helps you understand your situation and wants to help you get the best situation possible. Yeah. So I think that, you know, keeping that line of thought and allowing that leeway when it comes to price making and price decisions, 
I think that is super beneficial to not only the dealerships, but overall customer loyalty. Yeah. Because you want people to keep coming back. You want them to buy their car, but also consider you for their kids' cars, yeah, and, you know, right. and their that's friends right. and whatnot. That's so right. yeah. loyalty is super huge. Yeah. And that is only created when you understand somebody's situation and you help them out. Yeah, no question about it. Colin Kubik and Alex Maison, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Very much appreciated. Obviously, students from Northwood University. Um, you can check out Northwood University online. If you are thinking about getting into the auto industry, this is the best place to start. And uh, for those dealers out there that want to support an incredible university and get the best talent you can, it's also a great place to start. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Thank, thank you so much, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for watching Inside Automotive with Jim Fitzpatrick.